Skylanders. A series of Story of the Life games that started in 2011. Today we will look at the fifth installment of the series. This is the history of Skylanders Superchargers Ulster Levels World Records. To beat all store levels, the game is broken down into 13 levels. The Rift to Skylands, the Cloud Breather Dragon, the Cloud Kingdom, Land of the Undead, Battle Brawl Island, Spellpunk's Library, Gadfly Glades, Captain Cluck's Chicken HQ, Monstrous Isles, Ride Apocalypse Demo Derby, Vault of the Ancients, the Bandit Train, and finally, the Sky Eater. Skyland Superchargers can be played on a few consoles, with each of them having a faster load time than the other. So the community of 2021 decided to remove load times to make it an even playing field for everyone. Even though the game came out in 2015, it did not see its first run up until the Skyland Speedrun Discord server was created in 2017. And on August 13th of that year, we had the first run, at 1.35.31 by David. David had surprisingly implemented a lot of strats with just his own knowledge of the game. He quickly figured out that the fastest Skylanders to use were actually from the starter pack. Spitfire because of its fast flame fury attack, and Hot Streak because of its high top speed, and its Night Blaze attack that gives Hot Streak a boost that makes it accelerate way faster than normal. With this combo, David blazes through all the chapters. He used Spitfire in every level except two of them, Bedrock Island and Monstrous Isles. In Bedrock Island, David switched to Stormblade to make use of a long range to get rid of the sheep way faster than Spitfire can. And the Monstrous Isles, a level that mainly consists of a few slow driving sections and killing three bosses, Terror Shark, Peach Comber and Thundertoe. During the bosses, David switched to Wallop, a trap master from the previous game, to kill the bosses really quickly. David also made use of Max Portomass rank, also known as PMR. PMR is the same ranking system like Swap Force that gets you to rank up by completing various tasks through the game like lock bosses or vehicle sections. David was max rank, giving him small but useful buffs on Spitfire and Hot Streak, and he also avoided ranking up, saving another 15 seconds for each rank up. David would improve his own record, 22 days later, to 133.18. David was happy with the time, and he stopped speedrunning right after, leaving the door right open for anyone to get the record. And after 8 months, someone did. The record was beaten by Lotus, who was also known as Mikem at the time, when they beat the record with a 131 flat. Lotus' main time save was that they just didn't own Wallop yet. You see, in older games, like Spice Adventure, switching from one Skyland to another is really fast, only takes 7 seconds, but on Superchargers it takes over 12, and David switched back to Spitfire each time, switching over 4 times losing over a minute compared to Lotus. Sadly, Lotus was not max PMR rank yet, so they ranked up from 48 to 49 losing them about 20 seconds. But Lotus movement and driving was so much faster, they still beat the record for over 3 minutes. Lotus would lower the record further to a 130-49. But after the run, almost no one was running the game. 
the community was still really small at the time. But almost after two years, till another runner tried to go for a record. But it was not an ordinary runner. This runner already had a few world records under their belt. Primarily holding all the Skylander 3DS world records. Let me introduce you to Cory. They started running the game in August, and on the second run, on October 4th, they got the world record, lowering the record by 36 seconds to 130.13, with the main time save being Max Bordermass rank. At this point, a sub 130 was within reach, but then a new skip got found to completely destroy that goal. Supercharge has over 200 different playable Skylanders and the developers needed to make sure everyone worked as they intended. But with so many Skylanders, some stuff just makes us into the final game. And it turns out, once Gilgot is using his hover above the ground, the game does not put any gravity on it, allowing Gilgot to fly basically anywhere. With this oversight, Gilgot can skip over this gap in front of the Ancients, skipping the entire vault, including the car section with the bell puzzle saving over 3 minutes. With this new skip, Cory got a 126.42, obliterating the first sub 130. Cory lowered the record once again by 6 seconds during a marathon 2 months later. And out of nowhere, in 2021 the Sky and Speedrun community started to grow rapidly. In 2017, we saw 2 world records. In 2018, there were another 2. In 2020, there were three. But in 2021, at the end of the year, the board would over double in size. And with new runners, new strategies were found. The first strategy was with vehicle combat optimization. Runners used to kill every enemy with Hot Streak's Flamethrower. But the speedrunner Pool found out by putting in a trap from the trap team, it can be used to deal massive amounts of damage. Every trap element has its own damage output. And Pool concluded the Earth Trap dealt the most damage. Every trap also has a set amount of ammunition per chapter. So runners bought multiple Earth Traps for all the bosses and arenas. With the Earth Traps, Runners can save a couple minutes by just killing every enemy faster. The second strat improvement was using a completely different Skylander. Remember David using Wallop in Monsters Isles because of his insane damage? And Stormblade because of her huge range? Well, a new runner, Adam S, just found a new Skylander that is faster than Spitfire, deals more damage than Wallop, and combine that with the range of Stormblade, enter the reign of gear shift. A Skylander was released in Skylander's trap team. She was not that good in the game. She had really good DPS, but the dash lacked a lot of distance. But in Superchargers, the developers buffed the dash range tenfold, while still maintaining her insane damage saving minutes across the whole run. What you might did not know yet, that Superchargers has an online co-op mode, and Adam S and Cory to decided to do a run together with the new findings, setting the first and only world record that was held by two players at the same time, finishing the run with a 124.43. Using both gear shift and traps, Adam S would later improve the world record to a 122.36, Saving over 45 seconds in Bedroll Island by buying deck elemental bonus from 4th E before entering the arena. Boosting Gearshift's damage even more, allowing Adam S to beat Spell Slamser in his Nightmare Realm, himself back into the arena. Core did not own Gearshift at the time. You would think Spitfire was not capable of getting world record anymore. Core was at a disadvantage. Or so we thought beating NMS right back by just one second, just a month later.
This was just utter dominance. It truly really showed Corey's skill at the game. But where Corey shined the most was Captain Clucks, where they were a full minute and 10 seconds faster. Captain Clucks is considered one of the hardest, if not the hardest chapter in the game. Let's see why. Captain Clucks consists out of 4 chicken or puzzles and 2 driving sections. The puzzles are fairly easy to do, but in the driving sections there are also chicken or puzzles. But these are way harder. If you push one of them in slightly the wrong direction, you are about to lose a ton of time. Even the balls in the level required you to hit him with 5 chicken orbs to defeat him. Mastering the chicken orb mechanics was essential to save the most time. Cory and NMS were so close to each other, they decided to do a race. And before they knew it, they were both on record pace. NMS was about 30 seconds ahead of the record, heading into the bandit train. But Cory was 45 seconds ahead. But unfortunately, Cory got struck by RNG. This room is filled with spots and boxes. Runners need to find the key to progress. You would think the key is always in the same box. But no, it's entirely random. Normally, runners find the key pretty quick. But on this run, Corey didn't find the key. It was in the very last pot. Losing them over a minute. Leaving Adam S the only person on record pace. And Adam S kept playing well, finishing a run with a 122.06. Beating the world record by 29 seconds. <gasps> I'm gonna mess up! Nope! Time. 147.07 with loads. Corey just slowed the record by one and a half minutes, still without gear shift. At this point, a new runner was in contention. He already held the Enerpion world record. And he ended up taking the top spot. A Dutch runner, also known as Aardappel Master. He did use gear shift, but he was not Max PMR, ranking up three times losing him 40 seconds and still ending up with a 120-21, just 6 days after Corey's 120-40. Now the top 3 runners spelled it out. They are going for the first sub-120. They all want to be the first to get it. Let's see who did. Eventually, Ardenwas was on a run, that was ahead, which just kept gaining time. Gaining, and gaining, and gaining time. In almost every chapter, this was just not sub-120 pace, it was far beyond a sub-119 pace. And on March 10th, he did this.
No, I'm not adding it now. I need to. Okay. Chill. Focus. This might be fucking it. So please don't fuck it. Fuck you! Fuck you, game! Boom! Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! Yes! 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 Oh my god! I think this is actually a sub 119. I'm shaking so fucking much. Oh my god! A 1.18.03 This was the run he wanted. A clean run overall. When I saw this run, I generally thought this run was gonna stand for a really long time. Adopmaster made use of two new strats. One of them was in Cloud Be the Dragon. By jumping off the boat, the game doesn't know where to put you. It just puts you over to the other side. Saving 12 seconds. Other things runners did was scanning in all tech skylanders and claiming ownership. What that does is boosting elemental bonus. Letting Gearshift deal even more damage when the tech element is strong in an area. So for Bedroll Island, Ardabomoss was able to kill Spell Slimser in just one cycle, saving 20 seconds. But what happened 9 days later, nobody could have predicted. The record was beaten by a different runner, getting a 117.52. Well, must have been another Kirshit run, right? No, it was not. Well, who did it? Well, it was me. I simply could not afford to get a gear shift anytime soon. The only thing I could do is try to improve my skills at the game. I had a lot of free time, so I did. I did not even think it was possible to beat the record without gear shift at the time. I did not even have a capture card yet, but the camera pointed at the screen did not lie. This was seen as a perfect Spitfire run, and I barely asked it out. But on that same day, not even 3 hours later, Duke the Dragon, one of the most dominant Skyrim Spires adventure runners, who once improved the end record 8 times in a row but that's maybe a story for another time. Who found himself at 4th place, just 1 second behind Adam S, while having the goal of just getting 3rd place. Instead, he played out of his mind. A 116.49. This one was just remarkable. 
became the first sub-117, making it impossible for Spitfire runners to be able to beat the record now. And yet, another three hours later, someone beat the world record again. Well, who? There's only one person who it could be. Don't miss this shit, dude. Bam. 28, 128.46. A 116.09. We have seen a few world records within one month. The three world records in one day by three different runners? I have never heard of it before in any game. But how could the record drop by almost two minutes? A funny thing was discovered by Aardappel Master. Runners thought by just using a Nitro Blades attack on Hot Streak, we hit the max speed. But then drifting on top of that, it still applies to Hot Streak speed, saving bits of time all over the run. The other giant save was because of a rule change. The rule stated that every chapter must be beat in order. But after a community vote, it was allowed to beat any chapter in any order that you want, as long that you finish with the Sky Eater. Aardappel Master makes use of this, starting a run off in Petterborough Island. But why? Because of more RNG. You thought the Banner Train was the only chapter? The game is actually full of it. In the last few Skylander games, every element zone is a set element. But in Superchargers, every element is random, giving a 10% chance to give any element. Some elemental boosts are determined in car sections. In car sections, the game can only give you 4 options instead of 10. Earth, Undead, Fire and Tech, making it a 25% chance. In Barbaro Island, runners used to buy Tech Elemental Zone for the arena fight, allowing gear shift to one cycle spell slammer. But by grinding out chapter 5, Adelpo Master was able to skip buying it, saving 9 seconds. After that, he went to Captain Clux to get it out of the way, avoiding to reset 15 minutes into the run. Then he went to Monsters Isles, so he could face another RNG element, the Beachcomber fight. With about 5 seconds to kill her, before she goes in for an attack that can take 15 to 20 seconds. Before Beachcomber, in the car section, the element is chosen that remains in the fight. Tech is just a 25% chance. If you get it, she becomes a cakewalk and you kill her within 3 seconds. But if you don't, you have to hit her with every attack and you also need to pray you get enough crits to barely one suck her. But Artabom also got the 25%, letting him progress to the bandit train for the key room. So Artabom also did not have to reset right at the end. There's only one chapter left with another RNG barrier. The Sky Eater. Chaos. At first glance, there's not much to this fight. But after hitting Chaos to reach the second damage cap, he can either do one of two things. He will appear once again so Kizer can deal more damage to him before his first sword phase. So after he is done, you can damage him again so he can progress to the next phase. Or he will go to his first sword phase right away, forcing runners to beat him in a two sword cycle, losing 20 to 30 seconds. A 50 50, just before the final boss. Luckily for Art of a Monster, he got it. A good run with all the RNG going just right. The 116 stayed for a while until I bought a gear shift. By changing the chapter order again, I just want to have the big RNG chapters out of the way, like Bedroll Island and the Bandit Train. Then started focusing on the harder chapters, like Captain Clux and Catfly Glades. Catfly Glades I have not talked about yet, because at first it doesn't seem like a big deal. But after trap strats were found, a whole new skill barrier was created. Because the chapter has a lot of car battle sections, you're bound to run out of ammo at some point. And it's up to the runner to switch out the current trap and put in another as fast as possible. Also refer to trap management. In this chapter, you need at least 7 or 8 traps. And after you use one, 
you need to remember which ones you've used. And you have zero time to reorganize your traps, but during trap management, traps will get thrown all over the place. Eventually runs got better at this, especially with the new portal stress that I found myself. By putting in the trap sideways, the portal does not read it yet, allowing Hotstreak to keep boosting, so the moment you need the trap, you can just tap it in. Trap setups can be used before any car section, or when you're waiting for enemies to spawn, making catfire glades slightly more easier, but it was still a brutal stage that can kill any run. With my first Kishif run, I beat the world record, achieving a 115.25, saving over 2 minutes over my Spitfire run. But I wasn't done yet. I would later get a 115.06, making use of Gearshift's hoop mode, allowing her to roll in the air after jumping to get more distance. And using a new strat in Land of the Undead, named Fast Barrel. By dropping two explosive barrels before you're at the gate, you activate them early, destroying the gates 15 seconds faster. After this run, another new strat was found in Chaos. By running against the wall, letting gears of drop gears on the ground in one spot, where one of their hands will rest, dealing a lot of damage in just one second, to kill chaos instantly, skipping the final phase and 12 seconds. You did need to get enough crits though, so runners got the trick around 60% of the time. Then I did the run with the new strats, getting a 113.46, skipping the first sub 115 entirely. Saving time in Battle Brawl once again by just barely killing Brawl and Brimstone in just one cycle by just using Gershaw's ranged attack. But it was really hard to get. Later, a way more consistent method was found by staying in the hoop mode and putting Gears at one corner and rolling into them, making it almost 100% consistent. Saving 20 or 25 seconds depending if you get a one shot or two shot. While being over 2 minutes ahead of the competition, I kept grinding.
ending the grind with a 1.12.07. This run appeared to be it. This run got tech RNG in Battle Brawl. This run got a good key RNG in Bandit Train. This run got Beachcomber 1 cycle. And this run got Chaos 1 sword. With the only time loss was missing hand skill. And with that, I did not take the record lower. And nobody else was even close to it. Wait, why is this new runner dealing way more damage to the darkness? Turns out, Benzel, perhaps one of the best Skyrim speedrunners ever, was dealing massive damage to the darkness, while still only owning the Chaos Trap. What is going on? Well, Benzel was running on the Wii U, where he just didn't bother to connect to the Wi-Fi. So, his game was never updated. He was stuck on the 1.0 version of the game. Once Master and myself were watching this run live, we immediately turned to the patch notes. And what we found is that they stopped the soft lock from occurring in the darkness fight. On 1.0, traps deal way more damage. With this damage, you can surpass the darkness damage cap you normally hit, allowing to take over half of his health. Beating the darkness in 2 cycles instead of 4, saving a full minute and 10 seconds. You did need to be really careful. If you deal too much damage in the first cycle, the game won't let you progress after the driving section. If you don't kill him at the second cycle, the game won't let you charge at him and you can't deal damage anymore, resulting in a soft lock. What the devs also did was making loads last way longer than the 1.0 version, saving 3 minutes in real time. With these new time saves and the capture card, I was back on the grind, getting a 1.11.47 on the 10th of August and a 1.10.47. With the first sub 1.10 only 48 seconds away, I had more motivation than ever. And on the 15th of November, I was on pace to get it, making me the first person to... Are you fucking kidding me? It looked like the sub-110 needed to wait a bit. In fact, it was the third time in a row a sub-110 died in the darkness. Yep, I got soft locked. I was either dealing too much damage, or did not manage to kill him in the second cycle. But that very next day, I was on a run that started good, really good. And after getting the best bandit train ever performed, I was on the best pace I have ever been on. Now it's just between me and the darkness. Let's fucking go. Finally getting over the first sub 110 barrier. I was happy with this run, so I moved on to other categories. So neither me or anyone else was up to the task of beating the record. But the nature of supercharged RNG, 
I felt like there was always time left on the table. Especially that this run missed beach color one cycle. So I came back 8 months later. Running on PS4 instead of PS3. With the PS4 allowing me to waste less time during resets. And the PS4 version makes the Darkness 2 cycle easier to get without soft locking. Getting me a sub 109. I was about to leave the record sit once again, before yet another two strats were found. The first one is called Speed Limit Skip. On the Superchargers Category Extensions board, a run exists called Elemental Relay. The rules being, you need to be the element which is strong in the current zone. Artable Monster and myself did a race. During Monsters Isles, something unexpected happened after switching. It seemed that Hotstreet was driving way faster. They literally went super fast. It drove like insanely fast for some reason. And we were right. Because you turn colossal at the start of the chapter, the game needs to make it seem that you're giant. So what they did was slowing everything down, including cars. But by activating the portal screen with the Skylander and returning to the game, the speed cap is removed, letting Hotstreet fly through the level, saving 50 seconds. Adding on top of that, a Dutch Skylander speedrunner, Jens56, discovered this. By using Eon's Elite Trigger Happy in the Chaos Fight and hitting him with a Yamato Blast, you can surpass his damage caps and kill him in 3 or 4 shots. Depends if you crit everything. Removing the need of hand skill, only leaving the 50 50 after hitting him twice, beating Chaos a minute faster. While being miles ahead of the competition, I continued to push the record lower. After a while, getting me a 107 16. To 117 25, and I got the darkness uh, split. And eventually, getting a 107 08. What the fuck, sub 117? My sum of best was a low 106. So my final goal was a 106. But with so many RNG elements, it's so unlikely to get everything you need for that run. Betterbro Island only got 7% of runs passed. And Bender Train, who has a 40% chance of getting out on pace. And Captain Clux, killing 50% of runs that make it in. Plus the Chaos 50 50 at the end. And the Darkness 2 cycle. I just need one more run where everything goes just right. Eventually, I got a run past the gauntlet, bleeding time on the bandit train because of a decent key, and kept the clocks when the chicken orb flew in the wrong hole. This run was pretty much dead after that. I need to play almost perfect to make it barely possible. After saving a bit of time in the Cloud Kingdom, it still seemed out of reach, but then I got the fastest spellpunk library ever performed by 7 seconds leaving me 0 0.7 seconds ahead. Still, 8 chapters to go. Catfly Glades, plus 6. The Rift of Skylands, minus 1. The Cloud Breather Dragon, plus 3. Landy of the Undead, minus 5. Monsters Isles, minus 0 0.1. Right Pucklips, minus 5. Entering the second last chapter, Fault of the Ancients, tied with the record. All this run needed was to save 9 seconds. After me getting the fastest Fault of the Ancients ever performed, I end the Sky Eater on a 106.55 pace. I proceeded to gold the Sky Eater. 
being 17 seconds ahead, leaving the record between me and Chaos RNG. Remember, I need the 50-50 here. I'm checked so quickly. Like, they do not last long. No crits. No crits. Well, That's one crit. Shit, okay. I lost the 50 50, making it impossible for the sub 107, right? Well, in any sort of phase of chaos, he normally slashes between 4 and 7 times. But instead, if he's below 30% of his health, he will slash between 2 and 4 times. And all he did this run. He slashed twice, losing me only 7 seconds, letting me enter the darkness on a 106.59 pace. It was now or never. Alright, guys, should I go for the safe uh, 15 seconds world record or should I go risky and just get a record by 2 minutes and 20 seconds? A risky strat? What am I talking about? On that day? The very thing that runners dreamed of was discovered. Killing the darkness in one cycle. It was thought to be impossible. There's one thing I haven't told you about yet. The traps? Look at your Skylander stats. And Eon's Elite Trigger Happies are way better than those from Gearshift. This trick would skip the entire driving section after the first phase. But the thing is, that the strat was the hardest skip by far in the whole run. Going for it was basically throwing your run into the trash. Failing it would result in a soft lock. But getting it would save an entire 2 minutes and 15 seconds. Here we go. Yes! I, I, I fucking got it! I fucking got it! No! Not getting a sub 107. Not a sub 106. But a sub 105. Finishing the run and my grind with a 104.44. Shattering the world record and an old sub of best with it. Hitting milestones nobody else could reach. And this is where the story ends. At least, where it was supposed to end. Just 7 months after the 104, the biggest glitch in existence of superchargers had finally been cracked. Warping. You might already know this glitch from Skylander Spire's Adventure speedruns, or from Skylander's Giants. By connecting a second controller and putting on another Skylander on the portal and removing them, the game remembers the exact coordinates of where the second player was removed. And by switching controllers, going from player 1 to player 2, you will get teleported to the exact same spot that was stored. But in superchargers, you can't disconnect player 1, making it impossible. Until a French runner, Tester Rico, had an idea of how it worked. And he was completely right. While the setup worked exactly the same, activating the warp was the reason this took 8 years to find. By standing in a specific corner, or bumping your head against something above, adding the second player, waiting a bit, removing the current Skylander, and putting it back on the portal, so it's player 2, removing it again, then disconnecting player 2, by putting any other Skylander on the portal that you just had, will warp that Skylander to the stored position. So the hunt for warps began. Unfortunately, almost no chapters seemed to line up with each other, leading to a dead end, until our warp setup was combined with a plane. By going into the hub and entering a plane section, doing a barrel roll and setting up a warp while the plane is sideways. After activating the warp, the game puts you sideways as well. The game is so confused and straight up lets you fly almost anywhere. It was named after Luigi's Mansion glitch. Skew, but you fly very slowly. The solution was Lava Lance Eruptor. While in the Skew glitch, the game considers you to be in the air. If you do the Pokestick attack, he reaches insane speeds. 
With this skill, runners could skip entire levels, like get five glades. You can hit the ending trigger of the level behind the gate. The Cloud Kingdom could also be skipped straight to the final boss, Lord Stratosphere. And the same can be done with Captain Clock, hitting a respawn box putting you right at the clock fight, adding everything up to a 6 minute time save if everything is done correctly. This trick is way too complicated to get fully into, but the simplified version is, the angle that you are facing in the plane is the same direction you are locked into during the skew. Doing one of these skips was barely doable, but getting three of them in a row, you're asking for trouble. Doing one of these was even harder than the darkness one cycle, throwing the chapter route on its head. But after three and a half straight hours of grinding, I finally got my first and only run that got all three in a row, leaving me five minutes ahead of the record. But I still need to get past the bandit train and better brawl. While not being able to grind out the RNG, I was guaranteed to lose time. And I did, losing over a minute for missing Brawl and Brimstone one cycle, buying Tech Element, and missing the Beachcomber one cycle. But after getting the Darkness one cycle once again, I finished the run with a 101.14, setting the current world record of the making of this video. A world record so low, thought to be impossible years prior. It was Corey who got the first sub 130, Aardappel Master got the first sub 120, and myself getting the first sub 110. After 8 years of the release of the game, we are looking at the potential of a sub hour. Is it even possible? But that is what speedrunning is all about. Fuck you! Fuck you game! Doing the impossible. Oh my god. Reaching for perfection. Oh, let's go. More important than the world record is a story from the rivals and friends getting you along the way. If you ran through the time of watching the whole video, thank you so much. Probably not that many people will watch this, but even if it's a few hundred, that will make it well worthwhile. This is the first time for me to do something like this. I just want to share the incredible story of how far this game has come. This won't be the last record we will see, as any record stands to be, it's always beatable. I will be grinding the upcoming weeks and months for the first sub hour. It might be up to me for now, but after a matter of time, new runners will rise and old runners will fall, and then a new era of Skyrim and Supercharger speedrunning. I'm excited what the future may hold. Hope you will be here to witness it. Thank you for watching.